Thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Why I Love Flagler County, your local podcast spotlighting local businesses and local residents on why they like being a part of Flagler County. So today I'm super excited to have my guest Chris with us today. Chris, thank you so much for the time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me, Macy. I've been looking forward to it. Yeah, well, Chris is super busy, so I'm really, really honored that we were able to pin down some time Um, because I know we've been talking about it for a while, so I'm just really, really thrilled that we were able to get it on the calendar and do it today. Um, So, I mean, Chris and I know each other through the local chapter here at BMI, um, and it was really cool to get to know him a little bit through, you know, what we say at BNI and just talking here and there. So I'm really excited to learn a little bit more about this. So, Chris, why don't you kind of get us started and talk a little bit about your journey here in Flagler and all of the stuff that you were kind of telling me pre-recording. <laughs> okay, so I've been born and raised in Flagler County. I've been here pretty much my whole life. Um, you know, just uh, I'm obviously a younger guy, so I'm not too much out there in the world necessarily besides doing my own business and, and networking and things like that. But um, I'd say with me, with my own business, I am seeing the different places in Flagler County and Palm Coast a lot more often, you know, because like as a you know kid growing up, you know, you, you'll go down the block to your Publix or the gas station, whatever it may be. But now I'm, you know, I do mobile detailing, so I'm going out to customers' houses. So I I see the different the different versions, you know, I see the E section, the W section, the L section the double L section. <laughs> so that was the thing I was very confused about. And I found out the hard way. I was thinking I was going to the L section. No, uh, I'm going three minutes to the double L section. Makes no sense. We don't have an M or an N section. I don't get it. But it's the it's the little things like that. But it's, yeah. a, it's an awesome place. I've been I've been loving loving being here. No, oh, that's so cool because, I mean, that's how it was for me growing up too. I didn't grow up here. I grew up in Michigan and I grew up there for, you know, 18 years. And so like my mom would take me all of these places and my mom always told me, she's like, you should pay attention. You know, you're going to be driving someday. You're going to have to learn all these things. And I'm like, no, it'll be fine. I'll be fine. And she's like, no. And then I started driving and I was like, my parents would be like, okay, we're going here. And I knew the general area, but I was like struggling so hard on how to figure out how to get there. And then they would make fun of me. And I was like, guys, I know how to do this. And they're like, no, you don't. Um, But it's the same thing as you were saying. Like, now I'm down here. And then I have to go to all these places for, like, networking and just meeting people and, like, coffee and things like that. And I kind of know at least my section of Palm Coast, kind of like the back of my hand. It's like, I'm here. I'm like, okay, I know exactly where that is. I don't need to put on the GPS. I'm I'm just going. Yep, yep. I will say, until I started driving, I could not differentiate between us one 100 and a1a those three <laughs> I'm like, all have a one in it so what they must the... be the same place <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it's like dang it almost formed like a whole square around this place like, what one is it you know we're going on 100 well is that like going to banal or what you know it's a it's a learning curve but it you is. know you know someone who's young and you know worried about worried about other stuff you know then you know, you, you find out eventually when you start driving around. Right, right. Yeah, my brother is 16, so he just got his permit. Um, And so he's going through that exact thing right now, too. It's like he does, he's a little bit better at paying attention than I ever was about it. But it's still like, he, we're like, okay, this is why you have to like have the turn signal on. And this is what you have to be aware of. And he's like, how will you know? And I'm like, I don't know. You just kind of know. At some point, you just you just know. <laughs> um, but, you know, kind of speaking of driving and speaking of cars, I'd love for you to talk a little bit on what inspired you to start with your business and tell me a little bit, I mean, tell the audience a little bit about your business. Okay, so that's a good question. Um, so what inspired, I've always been into cars my whole life. I love cars, uh, whatever, whatever it may be, older cars or, you know, like, 90s styled um like japanese type of cars or early 2000s newer ones the whole range i love them all um and what got me into doing this specific business is i worked as my first job i worked at a car wash um right by the walmart um if you know what i'm talking about you may have recognized may have recognized me from there but um 
I worked there along with about 30 other people. We did the exterior and the interior stuff. And um, that's kind of where I got into it on more of like the quantity range of things, you know, just just getting a whole bunch of them done, you know, just vacuuming it out. But I started seeing some cool cars from there. And then that company eventually got bought out and laid everybody off. And they just stopped doing that specific service. So I kind of realized like, okay, there's a need for this service. Oh, and by the way, this was right in the middle of COVID. This was, I, I started working there June of 2020. Um, and a lot of people that were working there got, you know, we kind of got an outbreak of COVID to where people were, you know, not being able to work for like a week or two. So we stopped doing the interior detailing stuff for maybe like a month. And people would come in and always, they would always ask like, hey, are you doing the interiors? Are you doing this? And I'd be like, no, we aren't, unfortunately. So there it kind of like planted the seed that this was a, a need. This was definitely a need. And then when they laid everybody off, they stopped doing it completely. So I'd say right after I got laid off, I just went up, bought like a vacuum, some towels, like all my basic general stuff. And I just started doing like friends and family's cars, like just as to just as a thing to get by in between time of me, like finding someone something else I may want to do. You know, um, I didn't think it would be like a career choice at the time. But once I got really into it, like doing the exterior stuff and, you know, getting some cool cars under my belt, I realized that I really enjoyed it. Um, I really enjoyed the character development of it, especially um that's been a really cool part and then again the meeting people thing as well too because i've met a lot of my good friends through um our networking chapter that we're in and just you know getting recommendations referrals stuff like that even if it's outside of our chapter um and that's where i've really learned that a customer will become your friend quicker than a friend will become a customer because i have many customers that I am very good friends with. They'll be like 40, 50 years old. I'll call them up at any point in time. I'll just chat it up with them. It's great. I love it. That's fun. No, I I never heard I think I may have heard that phrase, but that's I mean that's true, really. I mean my dad's been in business for over 20 years. So I've really seen all shades of clientele and friends and the way that they mix and match and all that good stuff. Um, but that's really fun to know. So Chris, I would love for you to kind of talk a little bit about, um, I'm really curious because you mentioned character development and how doing so many of those was starting to change how you are. When did that shift really happen? Of like, okay, this is something I really want to take seriously as a business owner, full steam ahead, no going back. I'm going to, I'm going to go all out. Okay. So, um, I would say when I realized that there was actually like money to be made with my business, um, cause I was just doing the interior detailing stuff. That's all I was able to do at the time, whenever I first started out. But when I got in, when I got really into it and really started to research it, I realized that you could do stuff like ceramic coatings for people's cars, which is a lot higher of a value service for the customer, and a lot higher ticket for me to be able to offer. Um, so once I realized that, I'm like, whoa, this is an actual um, business. You know, I could do something similar as I was doing with my car wash job, except for not making minimum wage anymore. So it was a cool transition to kind of start my own thing and, and get that figured out. And I had some friends at the time who um, had like a pressure had, had like a pressure washing company and a flooring company that I was able to like work um, kind of part time in to get my business growing and to kind of stay afloat because um, starting a business itself, it's never it's never consistent whenever you first start. You know, you have a job here and there. Um, it took me about a year a year and a half to get fully consistent, I would say. So it does take some, does end up taking some time, um, but end up being worth it with me, like sticking through it. So that was, I've started um, about two years and some change now. So 
it's been it's been some time for me to learn the ins and outs of it and then also you know learn everything else with it and about the character development part um i realized it wasn't just cleaning cars or detailing cars or you know working forever on a car it is the marketing it's the sales it's um you know how you present yourself it's the whole range i didn't realize that whenever i first started i didn't think i'd be where i was where i'm at today two years ago um but once i really got into it i'm like okay that's like a little bit of a challenge to overcome i'm gonna have to learn how to do this but i'm my own boss so i gotta figure it out you know so that was the cool part of the character development No, that's super I'd say. cool. Yeah, and I'm really glad that you mentioned that it took you some time to really get your feet off the ground. Um, because I think number one, people need to kind of remember that that a lot of this is an overnight success. And number two, we probably shouldn't want overnight success. Like, how can we handle? How will we be able to build our processes, retain customers if we have this huge influx and we have no idea how to take care of them? But One hundred percent. But when it's a slower rise and you're able to like kind of refine your process of like, okay, this is the, this is how I think the service and the system will best benefit the customer. So when you're able to get that influx of customer and like, I know you're always super busy, you're go, 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 which is super cool. I'm sure you have a better process. Like, okay, it's second nature. Like, this is how I want the process to go. And this is why the customer feels so strongly about me is because I already know this because I, when I only had three people, I knew exactly how I wanted to do it. And now it's easier with however number you do now. Exactly. But it's, it's a time issue. You know, if exactly what you said, if you get overnight success and it's just, you know, everything is put on you immediately, you have four boats to do and, and three RVs and 20 cars within the next month. Oh gosh. If, if that was laid on me, my first like few months of doing this, I wouldn't know what to do, where to start, but now it's like, okay, I can figure this out. That's a lot for me even now, but it's happened to some people. They they get one, all it takes is one customer, really. Mm. That one customer could have, like, I'd say one of my best customers at the moment, um, I detailed a car for him, and it turns out he has 17 other cars, and he's a car collector, and he's bringing them all down from up north to Palm Coast, and um, and wants me to, like, do all of them, right? If that was laid on me, like my first few months, I wouldn't really know how to handle it as much. But you're you're hundred percent right. It's a time thing. You know, myself, I'm typically working around six days out of the week. Um, that's typically like full days. So like I said, kind of just go, go, go. Um, but I'm at a point in time where I am capable of, of doing that. So I'm trying to take advantage as much as I can. Um, but you're right in the sense of, you know, you don't have time to figure everything out. If you're just go, go, go 24 seven, mm. you know, so there's a time where I had very little work and I was able to figure things out, like building my website out and, you know, kind of figuring out, you know, like my Google page, my Facebook page, what are the things I should post kind of just researching the chemicals that I use and everything like that. Now it's almost a no brainer. Cause I already did all that stuff. I know what to, what to do, the process. All, all that stuff you know you can't just jump right to it but you got to take that that slow climb to kind of understand what's Yeah. going on and then really start to do it Yeah, that's really important. I'm really glad that you talked about all of that. That's I think that's something that we all have to keep in mind, especially during those like lulls and maybe our business or whatever it is that we're doing. It's like it's it's a take that opportunity to grow as much as possible and put some systems in place or just have a better understanding of what you want to do and stuff like that. You'll be, you'll find yourself really grateful <laughs> of these breaks in your time. Um, but yeah, before we wrap it up, I have a really quick question. You know, you've been in Flagler, Palm Coast for quite a while. What would you recommend for newbies in the area? Maybe places they can go, events they can go to, groups they can join, anywhere they can kind of get active in the community, kind of put themselves out there. Okay. Okay, so if it's business people coming to Flagler County, I would recommend checking out BNI. Of course, you see it with with your business, your dad's business. You see it with my business, um, and everyone else's. Really, it's not even like 
a hundred percent business. It's a lot of like the social of it. Cause that's where a lot of my friends happen to be. So I look forward to it. You know, I used to go in there being super nervous to talk in front of like 70 people or whatever. Now it's kind of just, okay, I'm friends with all these people. I could talk with them one-on-one -on -one at any point in time. Um, I'd highly recommend that places. Like if you're wanting to go out and eat some places, um, the Bantam chef is pretty, pretty good. I like going there out in Benel. Um, Thai by Thai is a good place. I have that one right next to me. So I like going there. Somebody's moving from like up north or out west, whatever it is. And this is something this is something that I didn't even think about until I was kind of thinking about this question is a lot of places don't have Publix. Right. A lot of places, I mean, it's literally just like like the southeast part of the United States, I'm pretty Yeah. sure. So pub subs are always that that's always a good one. Um, Yeah. I'd recommend somebody get some bikes and hit the trails. The trails are really nice here. Um, fishing, of course, if you have a house on the canal, got to get a boat, you know, you're right on the intercoastal pretty much. So that's always a really cool access point. And what I talk to a lot of people who happen to be like snowbirds moving down here. I always say that like Palm Coast is one of the best locations you could be at in Florida just because I mean think about it you are sandwiched in between St. Augustine, Jacksonville, Daytona, and Orlando right so you got like one of the oldest cities in the United States above you very historical very awesome in that sense um, you have Jacksonville which is basically like Atlanta Um, same with, same with Orlando, you got everything going on there. Daytona, you got like where racing has started at. So you got like, you know, one of the most iconic speedways there, very popular city, a lot of stuff going on there, either good or bad. Um, and then we're kind of like in the middle, right? We aren't necessarily a big town compared to, compared to those, you know? So I'd say that's a really cool part about being in Palm Coast is that you have access to all these cool different areas and you're in a cool area yourself, but you weren't necessarily in the city where it is extremely busy. You know, like I was just talking to another detailer who just moved from Orlando to Palm Coast and he said, dude, there's a detailer on every single block on every single block. So he's used to, I mean, he totally stopped by and he wants to just, chat it up just talk about like detailing and stuff which i'm totally cool with um and then i realized like yeah you're right i'm sure it's very very saturated they're very saturated areas but we aren't saturated yet it might be it might be in like the next 10 15 years we're Right. gonna see um it's a very cool place i enjoy it right by the beach and everything like that so Yeah. it's a, it's a nice place to be at i enjoy Yeah. it No, it's so funny that you brought up Publix. I didn't grow up with Publix. I grew up up north. Um, I knew what Publix was and stuff like that because we used to snowbird. But I have a friend coming in from New York and she's coming to stay here for a week. And I'm like, oh, what is it that you want to do? She goes, Publix. And I was like, oh, like what? Pub subs. chicken chicken tenders they're and I'm like good I'm not gonna blame you like I also want those all the time um they're it's like if I could get one every day I probably would and I probably shouldn't but I would <laughs> um but yeah well Chris thank you so much for coming on and spending a few minutes with me talking a lot about your business and then it's so cool to hear the that kind of push for you and And how you're able to really take this seriously. I think that's really awesome. You're able to find something you like and you're good at and then make money from it, which is kind of the best way to have a business. Um, so again, thank you so much for the time. I really appreciate it. This was a lot of fun for me. Of course, I I was a lot of fun for me too. Thank you for having me on. Of course. And thank you to everyone listening. I really appreciate you as well. And I will see you next time. Bye.